Hi everyone, thank you for attending our um, Meet the Program direct session for a new course, for a new MSc Master of Science course starting in September, um, our Mental Health Economics course. Uh, my name is Tyra, I'm the Recruitment Coordinator at the school and I'm here to facilitate the session and relay any questions that you have to our academic here and our student ambassador. <laughs> Um, so yeah, before we probably start the presentation, I am going to pass it on to Alviza, our student master, in, to introduce himself and um, say what course he studies, and then pass it over to Francesca to begin the presentation. So Alviza, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Alviza. Um, I am studying, um, I'm a postgraduate student uh, studying economics here at Queen Mary. Um, I, uh, yeah, a little bit about myself. Um, I had uh, my bachelor degree here at Queen Mary, and then I decided to continue uh, my academic career uh, at Queen Mary with a master uh, in economics. Uh, I just finished my final exams, uh, and now I'm working on my dissertation. Um, so yeah, I'm ready to uh, answer any question. Uh, about our life on campus, about my story, uh, why I decided to stay at Queen Mary for my postgraduate degree. And uh, I'm looking forward for uh, any question. So uh, yeah, I will pass now to Francesca uh, for the presentation. <clears throat> Thanks, Alvisa. And welcome everybody. I mean, um, it's great to have the opportunity to um, get to know some of you, hopefully during the uh, questions at the end. And for me to have a few uh, moments uh, to tell you briefly about uh, how this started and who's in, involved in the design of this uh, new uh, offering. Um, so my name is Francesca Cornaglia. Uh, I'm an associate professor at Queen Mary University of London and together with Mark Friston um, from the Wollstone Institute, I'm co-directing the new program. Mark is a leader in mental health and he's also the director of education and deputy director of the Wollstone Institute of Population Health. Um, he originally trained in sociology, but now works in public and forensic mental health. Uh, what about me? I started my career as an economist working on labor economics, but, but during my postdoc, I worked on health economics already. And my interest has been in health economics since then. Some of my main contributions to the literature on smoking behavior, well-being, and more recently on mental health, especially on the socioeconomic inequalities in health and mental health. Uh, both Mark and I, as from the brief description I've just given, you can uh, see, have a very interdisciplinary background. And, and this is clearly reflected in the nature of the master in mental health economics, uh, as, you, as you will see. Um, so why study mental health economics? So we know that mental health issues, probably to the people who are attending today, I don't need to make the case for it, are very common, disabling and costly. And to tackle these issues, we need a coordinated action uh, not only across different entities, and by that I mean individuals, families, communities and organisations, but also across sectors, and by this I mean public and private sectors. Anytime a policy is implemented, uh, there are going to be inevitably some gainers, and these are those who enjoy short or longer term savings or other benefits. And they're going to be losers as well, which are those that have budgets that are being used to pay for treatment or for care. And this may require some sort of cross-agency compensation so that the policy can be successfully implemented. And this is what is referred to as the diagonal accounting challenge. So we need to encourage investment across budgets, but also for the longer term. And this is exactly the kind of situation where governments need to play a strong leadership role in bridging between different areas of policy, otherwise it's not going to happen. And also emphasize and possibly financing investments that have payoffs that are going to be mainly way into the future. Again, otherwise they might not take place. What this means for academia is that we need more interdisciplinary collaborations, projects, research, and we believe interdisciplinary teaching. And this is where this master is, comes in. So in the last few years, the focus of the economics of mental health delivery has been moving away, shifting from psychopharmacological to psychosocial intervention. And this is because medical and other types of treatment for mental illness can only be partially effective, but it 
if we don't take into account the socially, social aspect of mental health, they won't uh, allow to address in an adequate way the issue. This means that the skills that are required to design, implement and evaluate appropriate interventions have, over time, broadened in scope and require a deeper understanding of the socioeconomic dimensions of mental health issues in the population. So the, we've seen that the focus of policymakers and clinicians is also shifting, and we're witnessing an increase in the demand for skilled health economists that have a specialization in mental health. And this is what this master is about. Uh, so it was gonna equip the students with the skills that are required to successfully meet this new demand. What about this program in particular then? What makes it really unique is the fact that it's interdisciplinary. And let me tell you exactly what I mean by that. First of all, it's a degree that will be delivered by CEF, the School of Economics and Finance, jointly with eh, the Center for Psychiatry at the Watson Institute. So the core modules are gonna be delivered by these two institutes, as is gonna be the dissertation supervision. But then we have a number of elective modules that will be offered by other schools, mainly within Queen Mary, but as I'm going to tell you later, also outside Queen Mary. Uh, an example of an optional module which is offered within Queen Mary is a module offered by the School of Electronic Engineering and Computer Science. This module offering makes it a true Queen Mary program, where students can actually benefit from synergies that can be generated by a collaboration among different schools each one with its own strengths. As I mentioned, it also benefits from uh, help from outside. Um, in fact, the master's benefits from a contribution from uh, the university, Baylor University in Texas, where Professor Scott Cunningham, uh, who wrote one of the most popular books on causal inference, which is, by the way, the subject of the last year's Nobel Prize in economics, will, be, will deliver a module uh, on mental health policies in the second semester, which is going to be compulsory for all students. So let me give you more detail about what to expect from this master. Among the things that you will learn is to understand what defines mental health economics as an active and distinct subfield of health economics and gain a critical understanding of the core issues in both. You will also learn to apply economic theoretical concepts to the analysis of mental health issues and explore the key policy approaches that are available to tackle mental health problems. Students will also learn to design appropriate interventions that are linked to these policy approaches and how to implement them, overcoming all the challenges that are involved along the way. And finally, students will learn to evaluate and critique these interventions. So in a nutshell, I would say that the MSc will take students through both the theory and the practice of understanding and addressing mental health issues from both an economic and a mental health perspective. What are the key information about the program? Well, you can attend it either full time uh, in one year or part time in two years. And at the end of which you will be award awarded a Master of Science. The entry requirements are a 2-1 or above uh, at undergraduate level in economics, psychology or health related discipline, but related social science subjects can also be considered on an individual basis. And then because it's jointly run by the School of Economics and Finance and the medical school, you will attend some modules in the Myland campus where School of Economics and Finance is based and the Whitechapel campus where the medical school is. Applications are now open for the September entry of this year, directly via the course finder of the uh, school. How is it structured? So there's semester one, where if you go for the full-time route, you will attend two modules, the mental health in context and the economics of mental health. In semester two, if you go again for the full-time route, you will have one compulsory module, which is the mental health policy evaluation I mentioned to you earlier, delivered by the Baylor University in Texas. And then you can choose between either psychological therapies and cultural psychology and between health data analysis or risk and decision making. Now, while the choice between psychological therapies and cultural psychology is a matter of, state, of taste, the second one, I would say, is much more driven by 
whether you have a background in economics or not. If you don't, then the health data analysis is going to give you a background in the tools that are used in health economics and mental health economics. If you do already have that, then uh, the risk and decision making for data science, which is delivered by the School of Engineering, is going to equip you with the tools you need to do um, data analysis with large data sets in mental health. Um, so that's more like a pathway depending on where you're coming from in terms of uh, previous education. And then in semester three, that's the dissertation. As I said, uh, you have the option to do this part time. So in case you go for that, you would we will the first year do mental health in context and uh, sorry, the economics of mental health and mental health policy evaluation. And then the second year, then do the mental health in context and the, the choice between the two elective modules that I described earlier. The assessment is going to be a number of different things from essay to uh, test you in the module and a test at the end. And it's going to be the same in terms of division between in, during the module and dissertation, which is a, roughly a third, whether you go for the part time or the full time uh, route. So graduates from the program uh, will have all of them a, gra a strong grasp of the economic drivers of mental health commissioning and policy, as well as the mechanics of delivery of mental health care, including but not limited to, as we said earlier, the psychological therapies and psychopharmacological interventions. Now, those who select the mental health with health economics pathway are likely to be the students, we said, with some existing experience in the healthcare sector. They will also understand the concepts involved in health economic analysis, including cost benefit and cost consequences analysis in the mental health context. And they will be well equipped to enhance an existing healthcare career or to begin working as a health economist with a specialization in mental health. Students instead who select a quantitative economics pathway will typically be economics graduate with some existing experience of applied economic analysis. And they will receive training in advanced methods of understanding risk and causality using Bayesian approaches, for instance, in which Queen Mary is an international center of excellence. This pathway should attract an, and appropriately train students looking to pursue a career in education, data science, or in academia focusing on mental health. Now, this is just, of course, a very broad outline, and each candidate will have their own specific pathways in need. Uh, and it's going to be supported in deciding in which way to go, in which direction to go by uh, the uh, supervisors, but also by the uh, career support staff that is going to take an active role in assisting career choice and development through a personalized supervis supervision, coaching and mentoring activities. The program also benefits from a very strong and distinguished advisory board with members that are coming from the academic world, the public policy and healthcare fields. Why have we established it? Because uh, being a new uh, offering, uh, we believe that some guidance over the first few years, especially from people that are currently working in the mental health field, will greatly benefit the uh, strength of the uh, program. The board will meet regularly and advise on the structure, the direction and the content of the program and you have a the few names of the current members of the board on the slide. And finally, I also wanted to point you, uh, your attention to a new series of podcasts that we've uh, prepared and we are adding to it uh, regularly, so just keep an eye on it. Uh, this focuses on mental health and mental health economics. Uh, and we chat with several experts in the field. You can find uh, this podcast by searching on the QM Queen Mary School of Economics and Finance on Spotify, Apple or Google uh, podcasts. Um, I think I'm Tahira done with the um, general introduction to the program and I'm very happy to just open the floor if there's a question about it. So maybe um, both of you can um, help answer this, but what um, kind of support um, is there available within the school for postgraduate students? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um... Uh, I believe Queen Mary has a very um, support kind of structure uh, for students. Um, I mean, I, I've received uh, quite a lot of support in, in different areas, depending on uh, the things I was struggling with. 
Um, certainly the careers office, um, which is uh, always open uh, in the Milan campus, uh, helps a lot with um, applications uh, for jobs after the, um, uh, the end of the programs, uh, help us uh, write uh, good CVs, give us feedbacks uh, about preparation for interviews, and um, really gives a, gu a guidelines on how to uh, best prepare uh, for uh, potential interviews and application processes, uh, which um, I believe is a very helpful tool uh, to have um, right on campus. Um, it is close to the uh, SEF building, so the School of Economics and Finance. Um, and uh, and yeah, this is the support uh, I, um, I uh, mainly receive from the careers office. But apart from that, um, there is also um, a very strong support from uh, uh, professors. Um, I took uh, quite a lot of advantage of office hours and uh, the availability of my professors during my uh, master course and also during the bachelor. Uh, they are all really open, uh, ready to answer all your questions I'm very keen to hear your point of view and, uh, and give, gives you opinion or perhaps um, guiding you uh, towards the solution rather than just uh, answering your question, which I find it very helpful because it is, it is type of a, it is a type of a mental process that really helped me grasp the, um, uh, the notions behind uh, what we discuss in class uh, during the lectures. Um, so also the support that I received from uh, uh, my, uh, my professors have been um, um, really great. Um, and I believe that uh, without it, uh, my experience would have been, uh, would have been bad, uh, but actually been really, really good uh, because of it. That's very great to hear, Lisa. I'm really happy to hear it. I was just wondering whether maybe um, you could also say something about the type of uh, peer support that you get uh, within um, the community of students. Uh, have, keeping in mind, though, that this master is also is jointly run with uh, this medical school as well. So we are speaking for your experience, which is within uh, the Myland campus. Uh, but I, I'm, I've I think I can easily say that a similar experience can also could also be spoken about by students from the uh, Whitechapel uh, campus. But from your experience within the Myland one, uh, do you want to give some sense of the peer community? Your well, experience? sure. So um, uh, I'm sure the the experience is different from um, course to course, uh, but. Uh, based on my experience for the MSc in economics, um, I really developed a very uh, welcoming and open um, relation with all the peers of my course because a master in economics uh, is generally uh, attended by a relatively small amount of people, around 40 to 50 uh, students, and uh, generally having the possibility to come on campus and attend lecture in person gives the opportunity to um, interact with other peers, uh, learn more about themselves, perhaps uh, decide to hang out for a beer or uh, whatever. And um, I believe that within the, uh, my group, uh, within the MSc in economics, uh, the, we develop a fairly uh, good relationship with out each other. Uh, with question, we had our our uh, WhatsApp uh, group chat uh, where people ask questions and answer questions. It was kind of active uh, throughout the whole year, um, and uh, in general, there are a lot of uh, events organized by the um, School of Economic and Finance where um, students can meet uh, with professors during a um, chit chat event uh, with perhaps some pizza or some drinks um, and, the, and those are very uh, great opportunities uh, to broaden your network uh, and expand uh, your connection outside uh, your uh, MSc of choice. So uh, I have made friends also from uh, other postgraduate degrees such as the ones in finance or investment and banking. And 
and, and and yeah, like there are a lot of um, events like this throughout the years, um, all organized by the School of Economics and Finance. And and yeah, I found it very helpful uh, to expand my network. I guess people, some people might not know that actually Queen Mary is the only university in London that has a proper campus. Uh, where students live in and uh, there's really like a community feeling when you join it and i guess other universities don't have it it's simply maybe because the, the, the different departments are scattered around uh, a big city like london uh, which might make it more difficult while because we have a proper campus where students live and there's uh, activities happening i guess the sense of communities is easier to uh, to, to create Great, thank you both. Okay, so the next question, um, I think, yeah, mainly for you, Francesca. Um, are there any recommended pre-reading or preparation for the programme? Um, this is a very good question. And I was thinking jointly with the, my co-director and uh, a few other professors involved in the programme, that because um, we have, it's the first year that runs and it's hopefully uh, going to attract students coming from very different backgrounds, um, I've had um, some people asking me what is the minimum economics uh, we need to, to have to be able to properly uh, successfully at, do the, the program. So I, I'm actually currently preparing a few, a collection of few videos to post on our hub um, with the minimum you need uh, to do well, meaning that if you listen, if you watch those videos, giving you the basics uh, of economics and you're fine with it or you can just learn it uh, before starting in September, um, you, you'll, do, you'll be fine. So just watch uh, out uh, for, uh, for it. It's going to be an, on the hub um, of, the, of the program, a new um, flag um, with a summary of a few videos. It's not going to be many, maybe like two or three videos. Um, and I urge you to watch them. And if after watching them uh, you have any questions, just please get in touch, and uh, we can look at them together. And I, I can, I can talk. We can talk about what was difficult and whether it's possible to overcome those um, difficulties um, before September or not. But it's work in progress. So thanks for prompting it. It's something that we are currently working on, and it's going to be on the website soon. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, okay, another great question. Um, yeah, mainly for Francesca. Why would you recommend undertaking a more specialist degree in mental health economics over a health economics program? Um, well, I mentioned something about along these lines during the presentation, but it's because mental health is like health economics, but more so, as it was written by Richard Frank in a famous uh, um, chapter of the Health Economics Handbook, meaning that some peculiarities of mental health can be analyzed with the economic tools uh, that have been used in health economics for a long time, but some tweaks need to be uh, made to the theoretical framework even, because think for instance, even just the issue of stigma or uh, how much bigger it is in mental health than in health, or think about the issue of information. So if you break a leg, you go to hospital, um, the information um, is going to be more um, clear to the doctor about your situation after after doing an x-ray for instance is the bone broken how is it is it split you need, what, what needs to be done so there's still an element of um, asymmetric information but in mental health uh, it's way bigger and maybe therefore the tools even the theoretical tools we need to think about how to go about making people better uh, need a specialist um, eye and it's not enough to just um, go with the two microeconomic tools for instance that have been used in, in health economics so I just gave you two, two small examples but there's plenty of them um, that justify a tweaking uh, of the um, health economics approach to be able to really advise policy um, for mental health Great, thank you. Um, okay, a question for Alvise. Um, what made you choose um, Queen Mary over other universities for your postgraduate studies? Why did you continue to stay with us? Uh, so yeah, um, my, a little bit of my uh, about myself. I had uh, my bachelor degree uh, here at Queen Mary, studying economics and politics. And uh, during my bachelor degree, 
uh, one of my uh, supervisor uh, was uh, Gino Gancha, uh, who is a professor uh, and actually the director of the uh, MSc in economics here at Queen Mary. Um, my story uh, mm, uh, started like my decision to continue with a postgraduate uh, degree um, uh, started in my final year of the bachelor uh, when I studied several modules, especially um, economics of emerging markets uh, during my, yeah, my final year. Uh, where I really enjoyed uh, studying about how macroeconomic effects um, um, created a crisis in, the, in emerging markets, uh, which uh, later affected uh, um, uh, the whole world uh, through contagion and other economic phenomena. Uh, and because of this, I really get interested in uh, learning more about the uh, macro um, uh, effects um, and how economics can uh, really affect people from a different uh, background and from different countries uh, very, very quickly. And by uh, discussing this with my supervisor, uh, he suggested me uh, to perhaps consider uh, uh, the MSc in economics at Queen Mary. Um, we discussed it for a while. Uh, I made my research to uh, see, for example, the backgrounds of the professors uh, who, who teach uh, the MSc in economics. And I found it very, very interesting uh, because there are people uh, that uh, come from a uh, uh, really good university having PhD from Columbia or the Pennsylvania um, University um, and which had, uh, uh, who were also like research assistants at the MIT or other at Oxford, for instance. Uh, so this really uh, got me interested uh, in the MSc in economics. And, um, uh, and finally, I also found that um, most of the, uh, or at least some of the professor of my, of my course um, had a um, background uh, which uh, in, in international institutions, uh, which I found very, very interesting especially because uh, I am looking forward uh, to start my career uh, in international institutions such as the IMF or the ECB. And, um, and yeah, because of this, uh, I got interested and I applied. Uh, and thanks to uh, my supervisor, uh, I, I think I made a, a strong application and I got accepted. Great, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences and it's great to hear that it's been a positive experience. Um, so one final thing to ask um, Francesca and both Alvisa is um, if there's anything um, we haven't covered um, today or in the presentation um, that maybe you should feel um, attendees should know, then yeah, please feel free to um, yeah, say anything to our attendees before we yeah, finish up the session today. Happy to receive questions now or later. I mean, my email um, is on the screen right now, um, and I'm sure that also Mark uh, Friston, the uh, co-director of the program, would be happy to um, to answer any question. Um, but please do check the website. There's lots of information there, uh, not just the uh, post that I, I mentioned earlier, but there's also lots of useful links um, that uh, can give you a bigger the picture of uh, what the mental health economics uh, field is uh, what's happening there um, but yes otherwise just get in touch and uh, you're here to talk anytime well uh, it was great to have a chance to kind of um, give you the main uh, an, out an outline of, of the program uh, but so much is happening in this field uh, that um, it's uh, really time for people to get the proper training to participate to this growing um, field uh, that otherwise um, it's going to be hooked to the past when in actual fact there's voices coming from so many different disciplines pointing in the direction of abandoning a little bit the old way of thinking about what mental illness is and put it in the context, the social context where individuals live. For instance, even just um, yesterday there was an article on the um, Financial Times pointing at the fact that 
uh, it's really important to rethink uh, what is mental health, uh, what is uh, to be treated. Maybe we don't need to actually treat with uh, medicines, with drugs, what we think is not the normal. Maybe the normal can be perfectly in part of society if accepted for what it is. And therefore, we don't need to kind of be efficient in designing interventions, but we just need to widen the set of uh, skills that we want to have as part of our society. And um, this master, I think, really bridges um, the difficult links between, creates links between different disciplines and therefore allows to really think about a new way of advising policies with respect to mental health and freeing ourselves from what has happened for the last <laughs> tens and tens of years uh, that is clearly not going the right direction. Uh, we are kind of just answering maybe uh, what the big pharma is asking to do and we are not really doing what's best to, in to, to, make, to increase the welfare of society. Um, and this can be done using economic tools, I really believe, uh, if we put them to the service of, of, of the health of individuals. Thank you so much again, Francesca and Alvisa. Thank you so much for participating. And also, um, yeah, everyone else that's attended. Um, but yeah, thank, take care, everyone. And um, hope you have a great day.